Welcome back sentient beings to another episode of Basic Batches. This one is out of the regular um, set. It's going to be specifically on some of the techniques around cutting that I do. Now this video is completely based on your feedback so thank you everybody who have provided really really helpful and uh, constructive feedback to me. Um, what I've been getting most back is uh, we like the cooking videos we love watching you do the stuff but we want to learn how to do the cutting the same way that you do so what i've got here in front of me is some carrot and some onions and we're going to use them as our demonstrations to so that you can get an understanding of how i do my cutting when i'm cutting things so most important thing and first thing this is why i'm holding this horrible filthy rag uh, is that you secure your board with a damp cloth it doesn't have to be soaking wet it just has to be a little bit damp to cause friction between the chopping board and the table super important that if it slips sliding around the chances that you are going to nick yourself or cut yourself or lose an arm or lose somebody else's arm is much much higher so a damp cloth first is my absolute recommendation. Next up is a very sharp knife. Now if you don't have a knife sharpener, they're pretty cheap to buy uh, in either homeware stores or hospitality stores. Even if you do get a pull through, it's not the end of the world. It's not like you're working with top of the range equipment you're just going with nice simple uh, home tools so a home sharpener is going to do a very very good job also on that point uh, if you are in the market make sure you pick up a um, sharpening steel as well it won't so much sharpen the edge it will maintain a straightness to the blade which in a lot of cases can help uh, with the sharpness itself so it's not a direct impact on the sharpness but indirectly it will affect uh, the longevity of the of the straightness uh, it also with a straight knife you're ensuring that you are cutting and sawing less which means there's less opportunity for you to cut yourself it also means when you do cut yourself uh, it won't be as difficult to sew back together as um, doing it with a jagged knife because you're going to get little yeah it's disgusting let's not talk about it anymore just use a sharp knife very very sharp knife if you want to use a smaller knife as well you are more than welcome to this will help you get in little fiddly areas and uh, make some of the more precise cuts we'll be doing I will predominantly be using the bigger knife because more people have one knife uh, than lots of little knives and big knives together also we're going to be using this which you will remember from our previous equipment video is a peeler uh, as we were talking about in that video this is a horseshoe peeler horseshoe shaped uh, or a speed peeler it is my preference it is what we'll be using to prepare the carrots today so I'm going to go with the carrots first Make sure you peel the carrots quite thoroughly. This is why I like the speed peeler. It means I can do it a lot more quickly than I would be able to without the speed peeler. See, that's all nice and peeled. I'll put that to the side. Uh, if you are going to take a long time peeling carrots or if you're going to peel them and put them aside uh, to keep for a while, I'd recommend putting them in a bowl of cold water just so they keep a bit longer. And they won't go all brown and disgusting.
If you're starting a compost heap, these carrot peels will do an amazing job at uh, getting that started or enhancing it. And if you really want to, you can just you can just eat it. There's nothing wrong with it. I mean, as long as you wash your carrots first, they're fine. Good roughage. What we're going to do now is top and tail the carrots. That just means that we're removing the sprout part of the carrot and the smaller end of the carrot. You can use this in your compost as well. Let's just do all three. So there are a few cuts that we're going to be doing with the carrots. We're going to be doing some Julien and Jardinier, which are thin batons and thick batons. We're also going to be turning them into a small dice and a medium dice or a large dice. Um, I'm also going to be doing offset cuts so that we'll be able to use it for uh, things that have much larger, chunkier chunks within them. Uh, something like a stew or a Japanese curry or anything along those lines. So they're the sort of things that I'm going to be doing. Let's start with the let's start with the offset cuts because that's the easiest. Uh, we've already peeled our vegetables, so let's get going. Make cuts at around about 45 degrees. Like that, and just continue to cut throughout the whole vegetable. So I'm only going to do half the vegetable because I'm going to save the other half for slicing. Next, we're going to do the large batons or the jardinier. We've already chopped and tailed the carrot, so we're just going to chop it in half and go from there. Remember to keep your fingers well out of the way of the knife. My recommendation is that you use this flat part of your fingers, phalanges, uh, to butt up against the knife with the uh, ends of your fingers, fingertips and nails well out of the way, curved, if possible. So when you're bringing the knife down, there's no chance that it will cut you. You might go like that, which I've done in the past, but generally, it's going to be fairly much like that, straight down. When you're doing any kind of uh, baton cuts, whether it's the julienne or the jardinier, uh, you'll need to secure the ingredient that you're chopping onto the board without it slip sliding around, especially because we're going to mostly be dealing with circular or, yeah, rounded vegetables when we're doing these kind of cuts. So for me, I'm going to cut off a strip at the back so that it sits nice and flat on my bench. I'm going to eat this later. From there, because we're doing quite large cuts, I'm going to cut a tiny strip off the side so it's nice and straight. And then go one cut, two cuts, Making sure that that is relatively even. There we go. You'll note that they are quite evenly heighted. So from there, because this is quite a because this is quite a small carrot, I'm just going to cut it in half, and that will more or less give us the large batons. Now. Any professional chef will get very, very grumpy at something like this because it is tapered. As you can see, tapers down. We would probably, if we were professionally to be doing this, we would probably be doing more like this, where it is relatively even all the way around with not much tapering except down here. That is the closest thing you can get to a baton or a jardinier 
not being an expert chef, which I'm not, by the way. To turn it into large dice, just line them all up and cut them to pretty much a square. There we go, that is more or less a large dice. They're not completely even, obviously, but I'm not complete professional. So there you go. Now let's go for the thinner cut, the uh, julienne. Same method as before. Cut a strip off the side. Lay it down flat. Cut strips off each of these sides as well. So that it is more or less a square. It's pretty good. And then we're going to cut much thinner. You'll notice that I'm keeping my fingers well behind the blade so that I don't slice them off. Now these are not 100% flat by any stretch of the imagination, but they're pretty good. So we're going to be uh, cutting from there and we're going to be doing uh, nice thin strips from them. So I'm going to line these up about three each because that's about all I can handle. The julienne is quite good if you're doing something like a salad or topping a fur or anything like that where you want really, really nice, de where you, where you want really, really nice delicate um, strips. So they are the thin, thinner strips. Compare that to that there. So these are much thinner. This is uh, more closely related to the julienne. So julienne is almost like a matchstick cut. Well, it should be a matchstick cut, but for our intents and purposes, this is good enough. I'm going to leave this. This can be our slice one. Look at that, tiny, tiny cubes. So that is a fine dice. Let's compare again. Medium to large dice versus fine dice. Are they perfect? No, they're not perfect. Are they good enough for what we're doing? 
Yeah, they are very much good enough for what we're doing. This isn't Mr. Chief. This isn't a uh, cooking competition, especially not one where you're going to be judged on your technique. This is just about you getting food out that looks presentable so that you and your loved ones can eat it. Okay, so next up we're going to be doing the onion. So cut down through the root of the vegetable. Just push down and it will come apart quite easily. You'll be left with two relatively even halves like so. You can of course slice it whole, but I would recommend using a slicer for that uh, instead of trying to wrestle it in your hands because I don't want you losing your hands, all parts of your hands. I recommend definitely to use the slicer. Scraps with the compost or bin like I've got, unfortunately. That's the that's the joy of apartment living. We're now going to dice our onion quite thickly for this one. Cut through the onion, not all the way to the end but just enough that you leave a little bit of tail at it. From this point, hold your onion very steady. And make sure your fingers are out the way as you push through your knife, capturing all the little bits. Keeping it secure, you just slice down. So that concludes our uh, episode on slicing, dicing, chopping and cutting. I hope you found it really informative and uh, instructional. If you have, feel free to leave a comment and a like. If you haven't, feel free also to leave a constructive piece of feedback and a dislike. I'm always happy to get feedback. It allows me to improve on the work I'm doing at the moment. I make these videos for you people, not for my own vanity project. So all feedback is welcomed as long as I can do better with it. I do have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash basic batches. I also have a Patreon page, which is patreon.com slash basic batches. I'm launching a new recipe campaign. Uh, any recipe that you want of anything that's been published so far, you can pay a dollar for on my Patreon page and I'll be more than happy to take a photo and send it to you with the recipe on the back as a PDF. Uh, if you have any ideas on what I can do in the future, Feel free to leave a comment on my page or on Facebook or even on this video and I am going to be more than happy to have a look at that and see if I can make it work. In the next episode I'll be doing a lasagna which I'm really really looking forward to. You may notice something a little bit different about that video but rest assured everything's going to be back to the way it was in the episode after that which will be a sub episode. As always, like, subscribe, comment. I've continued to be Nick Hoglan. Thank you for watching.